Hey everyone, so we asked you to ask us some questions the other day on our social media uh, channels and you asked some great questions. So we haven't done a Q&A in a while and we're gonna give it a shot right now. Okay, so this is totally non-rehearsed, unrehearsed, whatever the word would be. We're not going to edit any of this out oh, gosh. Um, unless we say some bad words, which we're normally not too bad about that. Um, we're going to start on Facebook uh, with your questions, but first I have a few questions for you guys. So before we get started on your questions, we want to get some of your feedback. Uh, we're thinking about going live sometimes. We don't know the ins and outs of that completely, but we're thinking about doing it. I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun just to hang out with you guys sometimes. What do you think about that? Leave a comment down below and let us know what do you think. Uh, yes, we'd like to see you live sometimes, or no, just keep doing the videos you're doing. And um, what was the other question I had? I don't remember. That's an important if one. If I could only see into your mind. <laughs> yeah, no, you wouldn't want to do that. All right, so we're going to start with Facebook. And Brooke hasn't even seen these questions. I've seen them, so. No, I've looked at a few. You looked at a few? Okay. okay. Thomas uh, Haugus, I hope that's how you say your name, Thomas. How do you make reservations to hard to get places? An example is sometimes I see uh, the end of reservation calendar, but people have reservations for past the limit. Hmm. Uh, how do I get a reservation at a hard to get place? Thank you. Thank you for the question, Thomas. Uh, I'll start with that one. I'll take that one. Sure. I think sometimes if your reservation uh, starts within the window, you can extend it past the cutoff point. So let's say that reservations for next November doesn't open up until uh, for a few more days. Well, somebody that's ready to reservation October 31st, they can stay for two weeks past that, if that makes sense. I think as long as your reservation starts, now this is just my experience with certain reservations. I can't speak for all of them. But if your reservation starts within the window, you can push past that a little bit. I think that's how that works. Yeah, but we always just try to plan our year very early in the year. Yes, so that early. helps us get a lot of the spots. And if we know, oh, it's not opened up yet, but we want, know we want to go here on this month, we could pretty much have it on our radar. So as soon as we can book it, we book it. Yes, we do. I mean, yeah, I know a lot of people like to be spontaneous and I know a lot of people um, think that camping should be spontaneous, but nowadays, especially after this pandemic and everyone went and bought an RV, you're going to have to plan if you're going to get those good spots. And sometimes they are a year out. I know that's crazy. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day about they wanted to buy an RV and uh, they, they told me, yeah, some weekends I just think it'd be fun to go up, get up and go. And I'm thinking, hmm, you're probably going to have to do more planning than that. So keep that in mind the next time you make some plans. Um, it may take, it may have to be far out. i got my phone here to make sure I don't miss any of your questions. Mark Shelley Waterman asks, We upgraded our stabilizing scissor jacks on the 2800BH, that's our rig, to the Ease Lift 7500 pound. We did that upgrade as well. But the camper is still very shaky when we are camping. What else can we do to better stabilize the camper? Um, that's a great question. So anytime you have the manual jacks, the first time you go around, you're going to tighten them up. And then after that first round, you're going to have to go around again because those other three jacks may have affected that first jack you, you tightened. So you got to go around twice. That's one thing to do. Um, we love X chocks. I'm a firm believer in X chocks. They don't pay us to say that. Uh, well, nobody pays us to say anything, I guess, but um, yeah, x -Chox is it's good. We believe in those. And they do have little um, stabilizer jack locks. Yes, and I always ask you, like, did you yes. put them in? Because if it feels a little wobbly and you forgot to put them in, you go readjust and put them in and I can tell the difference. Yeah, th the thing about those locks on the 7,500-pound jacks, they're a little bit more of a pain. So sometimes the jack will, the, uh, the screw that, that moves the jack up and down, I don't know, it gets like a little cockeyed maybe. And uh, anyway, so you have to finagle it. Anyway, I think if you go and tighten them twice, go around twice, I think you'll be set. Uh, let's see, what's next? What's up? Just, can you stop it? I can, yeah. Okay, because the sun's coming up and I think it's going to be in our face before we get through. Two more clicks, way better. Okay, the sun was going down and we were about to get lit up. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't need any more sun on my face. Okay, so yeah, I think we finished with the stabilizer question. Yes. Mar uh, Mark Shelley Waterman had two other questions. So, 
You changed out your shower head. Do you still like the new one you put in, or would you put in a different one? Uh, we did not like the one we put in, did we? We were talking about the one that we did the spray test No, with. we have Oxygenics now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We like that one. We didn't like the one before that. Yeah, so we started <laughs> yeah. with a stock one. The stock was not that bad. No. Um, but if you got low pressure, it's really bad. And then we went to a, what's called a stone stream. Yeah. We did not like that. It was not, you know. you, it's just flimsy. Facebook and, or something. I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. I got, it got me. Anyway. So, yeah. Yes, we do like the Oxygenics. I'm very Oxygenics happy with that good. one. Heavy duty. Feels good. Yeah. And uh, question three is really tough. What is your favorite camping accessory must have? Mm. I mean, mine's still a mattress. <laughs> RV bad. accessory. Camping accessory. Um, Yara upgraded mattresses. What do you think for camping, though? Like... We'll tough. edit out some of this dead downtime. <laughs> That's a really tough question. That's um, hard. There's so many. We really love our camping chairs. I was going to say the Kelty Love Seat. The Kelty Love Seat's yeah. pretty good. I really like that. Um, let's see. What else? Which one do you love? The Blackstone's really good. I mean, the Blackstone cooks That's like That's true, though. I don't cook on it. He cooks on yeah. it. Yeah. So, so I, I really like the yeah. Blackstone. If, I would get a 22 inch if you were going to get one. I have a 17. I'd like more room. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. The yeah. kids have a couple of. Uh, Pretty good accessories. They have some toys. They mm -hmm. like. They have these little like rubber band helicopters. Oh yeah, those are fun. And they light up. Yeah. You can shoot them off at night. They like those. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know that's a really tough. One. There's just that's so many of question. them. Yeah, good question. Um, that is a good question though. All right, and then Jake Kissel. Jake's been following the channel for a while. Thank you, Jake. On the stabilizer issue, he recommended the JT Strong Arms. I have no experience with those. Uh, message Jake and see what's up with that. Let's see here. Kevin Jones says, no questions, so to speak, but you do love uh, our product and how-to reviews. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate much. that, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you very much. Jared Lauren Meyer. This is a good one for me. If you could go back and make any changes to previous decisions, big or small, what would that be? This is a pretty open question, really, but just curious what you might come up with, if anything. I've had tens of thousands of people watch my experience going from an EcoBoost mm. to a gas 6.2 liter three quarter ton to a diesel now 6.7 liter three quarter ton. Uh, I wish I'd have drove the gas 7.3. I wish I would have given that. I wish I'd have drove that. Um, I'll do a video on this. The diesel is great. I'm not sure it's worth 10,000 extra dollars. So I'm uh, probably opening a can of worms there. But yeah, I, I would probably go drive the 7.3 if I could go back again. Uh, I got a great deal on that diesel, so I'm really not that tore up about it. Right. But yeah, I would want to drive that 7.3 before buying a diesel. Not to say I still wouldn't buy one, yeah. but... But I really love your truck. So. She loves the truck, so it. it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and I love it too. I just don't want it to break. Um, hopefully it won't. Richard Lynn. Richard, you've been following us for a while too. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. All right, this is a tough one. If All you right. could go anywhere in the country with your trailer, where would you go? Mm. That's in the tough. country. Yeah. That's really tough. Yeah. I, don't, I think because national parks are still on our bucket list. We're kind of waiting for the kids to get a little, little older. Yeah. So to me, that's where I'd go. I'd, we'd road trip it out, out west and hit some national parks with them. I think so. Yeah. I think Glacier is way up there. Rocky. I mean, the big ones out west. Uh, Sequoia, too. I really want to see Sequoia. Yeah. Actually. I mean, that's so. Yeah. That's cool. In the country, that's where I go. Outside the country, but still could get there. I definitely want to go to the Canadian Rockies. Oh yeah. Um, and then everyone always mm -hmm. wants to do Alaska, but. Um, Somebody want to cruise yeah. there. A cruise there would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cheat on the old camper. <laughs> All right, Dustin Funderbunk. This is a good question too. Family of six here. Okay, we're already. Not qualified to answer this. But we'll try. Uh, we always struggle with bathroom organizing. Mm. With six, there are quite a few toothbrushes, towels, etc. Mm. Any bathroom organizing tips? Also, the gray tank is our greatest weakness. How about y'all? We love Vogel, but I end up hauling the roller tank every mm. other day, even with conserving water. Hey, I welcome to the club, man. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah. If you're going to take, with six of you, that's probably going to be common. Because yeah. it doesn't take the four of us long to no. fill up the gray tank. And we do our... Turn it on, turn it off in the shower, you know, to conserve yeah. water. Um, organizing, 
that's hard. I mean, I I'm not packing travel size stuff. I'm buying the full size stuff, and yeah. both kids are using it. And I'm just trying sure. to, you know, and if it's a, set, you know, we might like a different toothpaste at home, but when we go in the camper, we're taking one. It's so kind of gross, but we share towels. I don't know if I'd have told that. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We share towels. Not all of us. I mean, we. There's go two through. towels. There's four of us. There's two towels. <laughs> oh God. Now we don't share washcloths. Okay. No. We don't share washcloths, but we're just drawing off. Like clean. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. bodies are clean, but yeah. Um, so. I'm sure when the kids get older, they're like, heck no, I'm not gonna ch yeah. share your towel. They don't have a But um, right with six, I mean, yeah, at least three towels, right? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Do what works for you. But, yeah, that's yeah, right. I just, I just try to minimize the number of things we're packing. So I'm like, we can all use this soap, and we can yeah. all use this toothpaste. Well, we do have a, you have a, you have like a little caddy thing in the underneath the sink that you organize yeah to. just to keep things from sliding yeah. around uh and then I, I do sit out a toothbrush holder but it works well in our camper because our sink is like a corner so we have our toothbrush holder there and yeah they all stay there all the time yeah but it still gets messy but i think that's yeah. just part of it you just gotta stay on top of it um wish we had a better answer really all right kim dunbar you got you won one of our top fan labels thank you Appreciate that. I don't know what that means, but that's still cool. So it says. Um, the fact that we have any fans to us is really <laughs> really cool. Yeah. All right, Kim Dunbar, how soon or will you outgrow your current RV? Oh, good question. That is a good question. Yeah. Um, you know, in January, we went to the RV show, mm -hmm. and we were really thinking about getting into that new floor plan from Grand Design. Yes, the rear den. Right? But the rear yeah. den, yeah, yeah, 3100 RD, I think it's called. I still love like it. that floor plan. Mm -hmm. um, but. A lot has happened since then, and to be quite frank, we're doing so many upgrades on the 2800 right now. Probably gonna stick in that for a while. Yeah, I mean, and it still works we'll talk really about well that. for us. We'll talk about that yeah. in just a second. We have some huge upgrades coming to that rig. We're probably gonna be one of, if not the only, Grand Design Imagine in the country with some of this stuff when we do it. And so we're really excited about that. And then. We won't want to get rid of it for sure. Yeah. We don't really want to get rid of it now. No, I still love the um, camper. But when you go to those shows, you fall in love yeah. with that stuff. It's always the carrot dangling in front of you. Well, there's and, a lot of new um, bells and whistles that come out every year, and you're like, oh, I wish I had that. Oh, I wish I had right. that. But um, we still really love our camper, and it yeah. still works for us. Maybe even when the kids are older, we'll feel differently. Yeah. Well, and we also have some upgrades coming, actually, in the next couple of videos. Um, we've got some really nice... Hey, buddy. <laughs> that kid's knocking on the door. Welcome to parenthood of a four-year-old. <laughs> He's just waving. Uh, we got some really nice bunk mattresses, like real mattresses that are custom made. We want to show you those. those. So that's going to help the, the kids be more comfortable when they get older, too. Yeah, yeah. So definitely. I don't think we'll outgrow it. Not for a while. Not for a long time. Uh, going into that, let's see. Do you ever see yourselves being full-time YouTubers? Hmm. Love your videos. The family loves watching them. Mike Stackhouse, we appreciate you guys watching, sincerely. Um, it's crazy to us that people watch us. We're grateful for it. We think it's cool. It's um, We're so grateful. Full-time, That's a, that would be a long ways away. Full-time YouTuber? Yeah. Yeah. Full-time YouTube Not me. Is, Maybe you, but not me. Mm, <laughs> it's a long way. I mean, you're looking at, you got to have hundreds of thousands of subscribers to pay real bills with YouTube. Um, yeah, Amazon... Amazon helps sometimes with that, but like our size channel is so small in that regards. Um, yeah, it would be a long time away, and I, you know, and it's also very unstable as far as an income is concerned. Some months are uh, they'll do be much better, like three times as well as other months, and uh, you'd really have to be an excellent uh, budgeter to make a living off YouTube for sure. So no, I don't see us being full-time uh, YouTubers anytime soon for sure. All right, Kurt Chandler, any problems with the Morad upgrade? So this is a interesting question. This is one of the really huge upgrades that we're going to be doing on the 2800 soon. Uh, no, I have not had any problems with the Morad. Uh, the Morad is certainly an improvement over stock. But you guys know, if you've been following the channel, that Lippert Components has come on board as ambassadors of our channel. And basically what that means is they send us stuff and want our honest feedback. Yeah. They don't want us to kiss up to them. They're looking for honest to goodness feedback. It doesn't do them any good for us to uh, talk up a product that's not good. 
and then um, and then they get a bunch of returns or a bunch of angry because it doesn't do them any good. So it doesn't they, do us any good either. Yeah, it doesn't do so, us any good either. Yeah. We, you know, if we're going to recommend something, we want to sincerely recommend it. We're yeah. not, it's not worth a you know couple hundred dollar product to lose all of your trust. Yeah. But what they're doing, Lippert Components is coming along, and this is what I was talking about with the Imagine, and they are going to upgrade our entire chassis underneath the Imagine. So they're putting in upgraded axles, upgraded springs. The reason they're doing that is because they're putting disc brakes on our rig, which is almost unheard of. I mean, no one really knows you can even do that with a lighter weight travel trailer. That's going to be huge for you guys out there towing with half tons. 50% uh, more stopping power. That's insane. And, uh, and then they're going to put uh, disc brakes, new axles, new springs, and shocks. They're going to put shocks on our travel trailer. I, I'm a form over. I'm a function over form guy. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> yes. I can't explain to you. I mean, that's another reason why we're probably not going to upgrade because we'll have the baddest imagine <laughs> on the planet. We're so excited. Yeah. But um, so yeah, more ride was good. I would wait and see what Lippert's going to do. Um, and we'll give you our honest opinion. That's right. So yep. yeah, it's worth waiting to see. That's right. That's right. Um, so good question. There's another question coming up about that as well. Let's see. Lance Crow. What are the best state parks or any kind of campground would you suggest for a beginner? We're looking to get a camper within the next year, congratulations, and wanted to insight at the best parks in Georgia to get started at. We will probably first we will probably first trip at Hard Labor just because it's really close. You must be close to us because Hard Labor's just well, county over. And speaking of Hard Labor, AH Stevenson won't be too terribly far for you from you, and that's a great yeah. Um, beginner campground to me. A. H. Stevens. We is great. really loved A. H. Stevens. The other one that comes to mind is Magnolia Springs. Yeah. That is an excellent beginner campground. It's flat, easy. The sites, most of all the sites I noticed were really easy to get into and out yes. of. And um, yeah. So. A. H. Stevens is a hidden gem. It, it's a little. Don't tell anybody. Well, <laughs> we, well we, we, we got like, another yeah. question coming up in a minute. I'm like, I'm not going to tell you our favorite mm -hmm. campground. Yeah. Our under the radar campground. Um, so those that's are, actually those the are next my question. Suggestions. Yes, so yeah, Magnolia Springs. And I would say this goes into the next question, Hamburg State Park. Oh, yeah. And so the next question comes from Alan Dixon. Favorite under-the-radar campground? And uh, I told him I wasn't going to tell you guys, but it's absolutely Hamburg State yeah. Park. I think you'll agree with that. I will agree. Yeah. So don't expect self-service. Expect, Which is awesome. It is awesome. We yeah. unplugged. Um, but expect quiet, scenic, small um, yeah, it is small. It's only twenty something sites, and most yeah. of them are on the water. We loved it. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the middle of nowhere. Was that Rayleigh's? Yes. So they have a restaurant called Rayleigh's. Yes. It's close by. They serve good food. It's really greasy. So if you don't want grease, don't go there. But there's a pond out back of Rayleigh's, and everyone goes out and feeds them their leftover French fries and hush puppies because they give you a ton of them. And, and these so fish are massive. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I would love to go fishing in here. Yeah, but you can't. But, but you can't. Yeah. So it's just a tease. But go feed them anyway. Yeah, but we love eating at Hole in the Walls, and that was definitely a good one near yes. uh, Hamburg. So, Generally speaking, our rule is if it has wood paneling on the inside of the restaurant, it's going to be good. Or yeah. cinder blocks. It's, it's it, oh, a hummingbird. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, good. I'm glad they're using it. Um, cinder blocks. Oh, sorry. Cinder blocks <laughs> or wood paneling, that's going to be a good restaurant. Yeah. All right, that is it for Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Let's go into Instagram. Let's see what y'all... Not too many on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay. JM Martin on Instagram. Is there anywhere out of state you've targeted as a must visit? We just got an Imagine in June. Congratulations. Live outside of Atlanta and love your channel. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. We've talked about going out west. What about just in like a, maybe in the southeast? Well, we talked about going to. Um Anchor Maybe down. somewhere around Gulf Shores, Perdido Key, yes. like doing a beach camping trip. Well, actually, we had that scheduled with... Um, that's true. We had St. George Island and Topsail scheduled, and yes, Hurricane Michael right. came in. Yeah. So we still want to go there. I think, yeah, to me, I think that's, that's on the top of my list for out of state. It's like, I'm kind of like 50-50 on camping on the beach because of all the sand. Like, a lot of folks... I have, don't know. I mean, yeah, there'll be sand, but I feel yeah. like at some state parks, I still feel like we track in a lot of sand. That's true. So, and we still put out our rugs and... It's still bad. mad on top of that, and we still have. <laughs> That's very everywhere. true. So, um, I'm interested in uh, Anchor Down RV Resort in uh, I think it's Dangerous, Tennessee. 
Is that the one you sent me? That's the one that's got the big masonry fireplaces. Is that the one you sent me? No. I sent you Mama Gertie's too. Okay. Mama Gertie seems interesting. Yeah, I the don't one with the fireplaces really... looks awesome. Anchor Down's cool. Yeah, I want to go there. Um, the thing is, we're more state park people. We don't. We haven't had a ton of great experience with resort. Yeah, you can eat that. <laughs> He's getting a fruit roll up, even though it's dinner time. Um, it's all good. It's but yeah, I think fruit leather. Those are two good ones. Yeah. And then there's a state park. I can't remember it right now. There's a state park in the Low Country, South Carolina. Uh, I'll try to link that in the description below. Okay. That's one that comes to mind as well. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, it's on, on the coast. All right. 62 underscore Mike. Thank you for the comment. Can you recommend a good quality portable air compressor? Thanks. And your name is Scott. So it looks like you've got a couple of answers. Um, Imagine Travels GD, which they followed us. They've got some, you need to go follow those guys on Instagram. Uh, they've got some great advice. They got a great, I think they have a good blog. Um, it says, we use an 18 volt Ryobi. It's not fast, but it's cheap, especially if you've already have batteries. So there's that one. Um, I've always heard that the Viairs are pretty much top of the line, as good as you're going to get for RVers. Um, I'll link that. I think there's some in our Amazon store, but I'll probably I'll try to link it in the description box. I don't have one. It's kind of in my wish list, um, so I can't speak from experience mm -hmm. on that. But everyone that has them seems to love them. Right now, we just have a, like a uh, basically a regular 120 Husky that we can plug up and if, if I've got a problem at the campground uh, I can just get an extension cord and pump the tires up there but if we were to have a flat and I needed to pump something up I'd be out of luck right now which yeah. I'm kind of it's not a good not, idea to do that it's pushing a, our luck. yeah pushing yeah. your luck a little bit but um, but at least I can pump my tires up at the campground so and the Husky's been good it's it, it rolls pretty good sorry this thing keeps going to sleep I have to wake it back up all right let's see imagine travels GD it means grand design what suspension upgrade did you do on the Imagine? We did the more ride, um, but again, I would wait and watch this whole yeah, Lippert thing. It's going to be so cool. I'm so excited. Uh, we just got the go on that about oh, ten days ago, I think. So very recent. Pump. Yeah. Also, we're looking to get another hitch system. Well, that's another interesting story. Um, ours is over 20 years old. We carried it from our old Mallard. So right now. We are in a Blue Ox Sway Pro 1000. I haven't had any issues from it. Uh, I've also towed with an equalizer. The equalizer seemed to do a little bit better. Um, the Sway Pro is fine. We I've towed with the Sway Pro with a half ton, a three quarter ton, and now the three quarter ton diesel. It does fine, it does the job. The little cams, the cam saddles on the sides are just starting to get on my nerves. and. Uh, Ironically enough, um, apparently it's getting on Blue Ox's nerves too because it looks like they're kind of phasing them out. Uh, Lippert reached out to us. Kurt is a subsidiary of Lippert, mm -hmm. and they reached out to us and want us to try their new, uh, I think it's called True Track weight distribution. So we're going to do that. And it's very interesting. It's similar to an equalizer in the bar system, but then it's got this really cool ball bearing. Uh, locking mechanism once you're going straight it kind of locks you in so it's even less chance of sway you watch the video it's it's, it's coming hopefully in the next week or so uh, the, the, and then I'll get it installed so the video up in the next month hopefully and um, that I'm very intrigued by that yeah 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 it's kind of perfect timing for that yeah. question not saying it's gonna be better or worse I feel like looking at the product it's gonna be better the the technology is new and so I'll find that uh, I'm excited about that so um, stay tuned on that one. Let's see. All right, let's go to YouTube. Nope, we got YouTube. No, I was like, that's it for Instagram. That's it for Instagram. Yep. All right. Your channel, community. Here we go. We've got five questions here. Four questions. Okay. This is on YouTube. Josh Hindley. Thank you for the comment, Josh, or the question. Would digital campsite posts be a plus, changing the reservation names over the air and, exact, and at exact times, rather than volunteers visiting each campsite and changing by paper? Um, hold on a second. Hey, buddy. What? You want some milk? Give us like five minutes, okay? I love you. All right, five minutes. Don't knock on the door anymore, you silly goose. <laughs> You're giving us a dirty look, boy. <gasps> I said you give me your mean mugging us. 
Go sit down for a minute, you bonehead. He's putting his ear up to the Love door. you. <laughs> and the okay. All right. Let me repeat that. Would digital campsite posts be a plus? Changing the reservation names over the air and at exact times rather than volunteers visiting each campsite and changing by paper. Um, that's a good question. That's an interesting thought. I, um, <laughs> I think you moved to a window. <laughs> so, uh, but that's an interesting thought. Uh, I'm not a fan of that type of technology. I would be better with just keeping it old school paper. But with COVID... Um, <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> He's very tenacious. This person. is why we don't put out more videos because we deal with this all the time. <laughs> um, so anyway, the digital campsite post, I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, I think campsites are already kind of strapped for cash, especially the state stuff yeah. and the federal stuff. So I'm not sure, sure that would work. But in the day of COVID, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it yeah. would be interesting to see. Um, Sounds like an invention idea for you, Josh. Mm. Maybe you can get it, sell it. I don't know. Let's see. How to get hard to reserve campsites? What is the trick? We did. Um, we did talk about that earlier. We again. We just schedule a year out. Yeah, we just try to plan as far in advance as we can, mm. uh, or at least have our calendar marked for. We know on this day, the campsite or the campground's going to open up reservations. For the week that we hope to be there, and we correct we book it. Um, yeah, yeah. And then we have a little vacation to look forward to at least once a month. So really, no trick. So. I think it's just timing. I, I think the trick is just going ahead and booking it. Yeah. And uh, you know, if, if you're more apt to go that way, mm -hmm. you've got something to look forward to. I know it's hard for people to comprehend whether or not they can go camping a year out, but worst case scenario, if you can't go, you're normally only out. 70 bucks at most well or you cancel and you get some majority of, back, of yeah. your money back so uh, it's not but, you know into the world but we or sometimes we we had it on our calendar and they were like oh we could we need to move it a weekend and we pay what like a ten dollar change fee sometimes if you need to move it it's 10 to bucks to change it, it. and it was yeah. worth it because we already were planning to make time for it we just needed to change it a little bit correct so yeah um yeah yeah there's just no it. tricks i mean just yeah I know that's hard. And then there's a comment on that one that says uh, they should go back to first come, first get, pick your own site. Mm. I disagree I because then we could never go camping. I mean, we don't get off work until Friday at 5, mm -hmm. and then by the time we got to the site, uh, everything would be full. So um, that would not work for us right. at all. Yeah. So. Just recently, we would talked about going to Vogel, I mean, to DeSoto Falls. Correct. Camp. What is that called? It's a campground. It's a campground. federal. federal okay. Yeah. Um, but then we talked ourselves out of it because it's first come first serve and yeah. we knew we were working that Friday when we got off and we got everything together we had most everything together but by the time yeah. we got there we may not have a campsite and we didn't yeah. want to be in that situation so we went to Vogel instead where we knew we had a reserve could get a reservation correct so. yeah I can't imagine driving two and out two hours just to see that you're not going to get campsite driving home um, so I, we we'll that have to agree to disagree yeah. on that one Okay, Chris Land commented or asked, how far do you typically travel? Hmm. So typically probably, I'd say on average two and a half. Yeah. Two, That's I on average. Like some shorter, yeah, two, two some longer. Yeah. Because we um, go on some three hour. We, d we have pulled some three hour. Yeah. Um, but if it's going to be farther than that, we try to take some personal time off from work. Right. So that yeah. we can make the most out of that long trip. Um, the furthest trip we've done in one day, so we've done seven hours in one day. That was, maybe it was more than seven. It was Crooked River down way southeast oh, part of the yeah. state. But that was for um, a whole week. So that was for we spring break. That. So it wasn't a, a couple years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's the furthest we traveled. Normally it's two to three hours. Okay. Denden501 asks, what kind of problems do hailstorms cause to the roof of an RV? Great Depending on the severity of the damage, how would it be repaired? I live in Dallas-Fort Worth area and just had our roof replaced due to hail. So that's going to vary on the type of roof you have. Um, most travel trailer roofs and fifth wheel roofs right now are going to TPO with a, a, an underlayment of plywood. So it'd have to be some really big hail to mess up the roof. Now the skylights are a different story. So uh, you know you may have some issues with your cover on your air conditioner or your skylights cracking those. Yeah. Uh, that would be much more of a concern and if those break you just literally just pull those out and uh, and replace and seal back up 
Uh, as far as the roof is concerned, uh, if you're just getting little dents up there from small, you know, marble size hail, I, I don't know, I don't think it would do much, at least not to a TPO or a rubber roof. There's still some metal roofs out there, and I don't even think it would do much to that besides just be cosmetic. Yeah, it's it's that's such a hard question to ask. There's so many variables, but um, but yeah, I don't. I would be more worried about your skylights. If they do have to replace it, what they'll do is they'll literally just peel back the whole thing, replace the plywood if that's what was damaged, and uh, if it was just the TPO, then they would just lay do another layment of TPO over the top of the plywood of the original plywood. But if the plywood get damaged too, which would be like baseball size hail, um, then they just have to. I mean, literally have to replace replace the whole roof. Uh, I would, I guess that would be an insurance thing. I would imagine that would be an insurance situation because, yeah, because if a tree fell on it too, insurance would cover that. So, all right, I think that's, um, I think that's it. Those are some good questions. Making sure you can ask one while we're doing that. L hey, listen, we love doing these videos. Thank y'all so much. Um, again, like we said in the last one, which has been a while. It's been. Maybe a, over a year. Close to it. Anyway, yeah. so, um, so, but we like doing these because we, you get to choose what we talk about. And any other videos, it's kind of like we just throw one out there and say, hey, watch this. Yeah. But uh, it's fun because you guys get to uh, kind of work the script. Yeah. Right? I think it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And I think we need to do it again soon. Yeah, let's Not do it again soon. a year soon. from now. So <laughs> the next one we want to do, we want to do one live. But there's two things there. You see what, you know, the kiddos, I don't think y'all care, but really, um, sometimes it gets a little much. And uh, we got to figure out how to make that to where it's seamless and doesn't mess up. So, but if you would like for us to go live, just kind of a hangout, have a, have a beer, hang out with you guys, just get questions in real time. We would love to do that at, you know, let us know if you're interested. So, yeah. We'd good? love to plan it. There's interest. We'll yeah, do we'll it. do it. We'll make it work. Sounds good, guys. Uh, stay tuned. Got some great videos going. Well, I just sent a video list to Brooke today. I think we've got over 20 videos yes. uh, stacked up. So we're good to go till early next year at least. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, we're excited. Good stuff going on. I hope you, hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please consider subscribing. Thank you.